Okay, we're at Western Iowa Tech here today, and we're getting ready to change some uh, wheel bearings on a Hayabusa, uh, real common to all your GSXRs, and about any other wheel that uses a sealed roller bearing. But go ahead and listen to this here. Spin it faster. Okay, sounds like a cheap skateboard wheel there. Uh, the other wheel bearing's just as bad. Uh, thing was, this wheel, uh, wheel bearing set was actually just replaced and we found it to be grossly over torqued and that can cause those bearings obviously to fail prematurely. What we're going to do, come here and focus in here. We want to change these wheel bearings out. I, in a video earlier we made the sound, you can hear how bad those are. And there's not much room to slide the center spacer back and forth to do the traditional method of taking a punch down on the other side and knocking the bearing out one side at a time. We really want to use a collet style remover and this is pretty large. The tool's pretty expensive for just this one wheel that we don't do a lot of this large bearing diameter. So we have another trick and that's what this video is going to be about. And that is we're going to take and weld a washer in here to create a place for us to um, have a punch or a place to be able to punch that bearing out. So the other thing is before we ever remove these bearings we want to go ahead, it's a good idea to take and record the depth of where that bearing was sitting in this wheel. Does that make sense? And I've went ahead and already done that. It doesn't mean it's right because the last mechanic could have done it wrong but the one thing about this is that at least we have a reference point. We have an idea where it was. I'm going to heat this hub up a little bit to make it easier to get the bearing out. But first off, we're just going to weld that washer in there, give us a place to punch. One other th So I'm going to weld a washer in here. Hopefully I got one that's big enough. Perfect. I'm just going to cover that up. Alright, so you can see now that we have a place to go ahead and punch that bearing out. Hear the creaking and banging around that's going on? There's a good chance that that bearing would push out pretty easy. Is it moving? Yeah. Clear. That's it. So I really don't need to, I don't need to uh, videotape the other side there. But obviously that is one way if you don't have the expandable style collet to uh, get the bearing out really quick and easy. Okay, we're going to continue on with our uh, wheel bearing installation here on our uh, Hayabusa. And what we like to do is heat up the hub here real nice and even. Then show them the temp gun there. <clears throat> so then we're going to be able to pull the heat source away. So we're 136, we're a ways to go, keep heating. We're gonna try and get around 230, 250 degrees, really uh, opens that up so that we can uh, press that bearing in. And we're actually gonna pull it in with a tool you'll see here in a bit that we've made. Another uh, commercial tool that's out there, go ahead and open that up, Brent. It's a seal driver set. And the problem that we have here is that the center hole, hold one of those up, and grab that all thread on the other side of you. For the tool we're going to use to pull it in, uh, the inner diameter isn't large enough, so we're going to do a little bit different trick, but you'll see us use this, keep that open, you'll see us use this in the future for uh, quite a bit of our uh, two-stroke and four-stroke bearing installations. Uh, stay tuned for those videos or check them out on our other playlists. Alright, we're going to try this here, let's see where we're at. Keep the heat on for a second, turn it that way. Yeah, we're good. Go ahead and shut it off. Alright, move that out of the way. So we're dealing with heat. Obviously this is a concern here. So we're going to take and block. Come around here, Leah. We're going to block this side so that we can't come in with the tool. And we're just going to set this first bearing. Hold the wheel. Guys, grab those, get these tools ready to go. Then we're going to take, and because we heated it up, probably going to be able to just, oop, I didn't even need to press it. We got it hot enough. Do you see that? Okay, I don't want to let go of this here. What I want is that to actually cool for a second so it doesn't pop out. Just to show the tool, hold the, hold the, 
get the tire? Okay. Give me that other uh, washer. Yep. Come around the side and grab the nut too. See the great thing about heat? How we didn't have to have any effort? You don't burn yourself. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just pull that tight. Let's hold the wheel. You got the wheel? Okay. Make sure we get this here. The threads are kind of buttered up on this, so I'll show you guys how to do that today. But what, what I'd do if I didn't have it hot enough is, I got shorted up threads on this one, is I need to make sure that I don't go down inside the wheel. And we didn't use a bunch of specialty tools or anything else, but do you see how easy we made that happen instead of basically beating it with a hammer or drawing it into place? Now, we gotta use some careful, or some caution too, because aluminum here, we, I mean, we don't wanna sit and heat this to 700 degrees. I wanna say, don't use a torch, don't use an open flame, Use an, uh, an infrared heat source like we did with the heat gun. It works really well. I'm just going to keep a little tension on this, and what that's going to do is allow the bearing to not unseat itself. When we install this one, actually down inside, we're going to basically seat those two together. The left one on this particular bike has a lip on there on the wheel itself, so it's, it bases... Hold the tire. It bases... Back up a little bit so I can get my hands on this. By putting the left bearing in first, and I want to say the correct bearing, what that does is that determines where the center spacer and the other bearing is going to sit in the wheel, okay? Now, why that's so important is, come behind me here. If you, if you think about it, when this is sandwiched between a couple of bearings in here, Okay? Where that wheel rides on the swing arm depends on this overall distance of all the spacers that make up this assembly. So if I don't seat my bearings correctly, let's say I set the bearings over here, okay, that means that the whole wheel potentially could be offset. Sometimes it won't even fit in the swing arm. But if it will fit, if it, if it will slide in there, now my chain and my brake rotor aren't going to be lined up. This stuff is set exact okay there's not you know a quarter inch of room in here so we have to be really particular where we put those bearings so that our brake rotor sits in the middle of a brake caliper and that our chain and sprockets line up okay you tight stop okay let off It's going pretty easy though because we have it heated. Does that make sense? Hold it. 